Good afternoon. I'm Peter Henry, uh, founder of Act5 Ventures, and this is a special edition of Ding Ding TV's Conversations because I'm turning the tables and taking this opportunity to actually interview the founder of Ding Ding TV, Diana Ding, and to help recognize, celebrate, and also talk about the 10 year journey that you've taken since first envisioning what Ding Ding TV could be and the journey to what it is today and hopefully talk a little bit about some of the, the purposes and the adventures and hear some of your stories, but also talk a little bit toward the end about what next, right? There's been this wonderful 10 year journey. Um, a lot has happened. We're here in this beautiful studio. Um, so I'd like to hear your story for a change. Since you're usually the interviewer, I thought this would be a lot of fun and uh, hopefully you're not too nervous being the one uh, uh, who's getting asked all the questions. So let's start with just a little bit of an introduction. Anybody watching knows about Ding Ding TV in general, but, but what about you? A little bit about yourself and about how you came to envision this, this business and its effect on connecting Silicon Valley with the world. Thank you so much, Peter. It's really amazing that first time we sit in the studio and I am interviewed by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, talking about Ding Ding TV, when I look back these 10 years, I could hardly believe where we, we were at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We started from a scratch, uh, 3,000 US dollars, and all these years, 10 years. So Ding Ding TV is a counter and a connection for entrepreneurs. I was working in the high-tech company. We do system on chips. Mm -hmm. But media has always been my passion. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like, like, you know, it's so important, interesting that so many people came to Silicon Valley every day, but there's no Chinese American media focused on high tech and innovation on 2010. S yeah. That's so surprising. I mean, I mean, China <laughs> has always been so closely integrated in high technology between Silicon Valley and the world, I mean, both in terms of production and innovation and I invention. Um, and it, it's surprising that that, that was sort of an, a, you know, an empty space at the time. It's really surprising. Then later I figured out why is nobody's doing that? Because nobody can figure out how to make money. <laughs> <laughs> it's so important and so meaningful. Yeah. And when we first started this, we got so many good ideas. We want to create accountants and we want to do interviews and cover the events. Mm -hmm. was all the ideas to spend money, but mm. not the idea, none of them are making money. We didn't know how to make money when we first started this. Mm. So did you, feel, did you feel like you couldn't charge for those services? Because it seems like that's certainly a valuable offering in and of itself to create the connections and to help create opportunities for both sides to kind of experience each other. But why, why how, how did that not make money? <laughs> you know, Were you just being too nice? <laughs> no, no, for now, I cannot realize why. Because when we first started our business, Ding Ding TV, we actually thinking about, you know, many good ideas, all, all dreams, but we never really see the real needs about our customers. That, I think that's uh, the, the main reason we're not making money for many years. We're so excited. We did a show for children. We did a show for cooking show, the mm -hmm. art show, the culture, and the high tech innovation. We did everything, but you know, we are not able to charge people because for traditional media, it's always you get an income from the advertising. Right. But when you are doing online, there's no advertising. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've, it, and you have this, this challenge that you know, none of this is cheap to do, but, uh, but and the audience has to be big enough for the ads. If you, if you ever did have ads, the audience has to be big enough for the ads to generate revenue. So you, you talk about coming around to recognizing different needs. Tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, what, what, what was sort of the aha moment where you recognized here's a need that's still unmet, we can do this, and it's valuable enough that we can make money at it. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, to make the long story short, I had a very good partner, uh, David McAllis. He's a Jewish American and very smart, working really hard. And uh, when he left me after half a year uh, of our startup, I, I started to think, I almost quit. I was thinking, well, are we on the right track? 
and what's the meaning, why we're doing what we're doing. Then I had a very good opportunity, able to talk with the investors here in Silicon mm-hmm. Valley, Dr. Shin Kong and Mr. Sandy Chow. And they sit down with me and actually, you know, give me many great suggestions and mm-hmm. ideas. They asked me the, some questions that I never thought before. Who is going to pay for what? Mm-hmm. How do you make money? How do you survive yourself? Mm-hmm. So I started to think about that, and I learned that, you know, for, as a startup company, it's so valuable to have someone there to tell you and guide you on the right direction. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we are so fortunate because in the, the community, we have those great people helping us. So I had opportunity talking to these investors and the mentors. Mm-hmm. The more yeah. I talked to them, and I went to many of the, the events like, you know, innovation and st- for startups, entrepreneurs event. Mm-hmm. Each time I was there, I listened to people and opened a door for me. I feel like, you know, that's how we, that's, that's, you know, how we survive. And this is a huge need. Many of the startups like us, they don't know what to do. They don't know their direction. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a need. So we start to work with startup companies and become mm-hmm. a content partner to connect the dreams. So our slogan is connecting dreams. Interesting. That's fantastic because it, it, it's funny that in a way to find those needs and to get to that point where you, where you have recognized need and can serve as a catalyst and a support for others, you actually basically went through all the stages of being a startup yourself from ideation that whole area where you have this notion of something to do, but really, you know, for most idea people, they're not usually the business people. And so the idea may or may not turn into a business. And then developing, you know, what, you know, what, what now in Silicon Valley we call an MVP, a minimum viable product, you put that out there, you found out that it was fun to do, it worked, but it didn't make money. And so you went back and refined it and then got out into the market and, and you know, the last several years of this, of this 10 year journey have shown that yes, now the, now the MVP really has that V, it's viable. It's not just an idea turned into a product that, that may or may not fit in the market. And now you're in this stage where you're, you're, you're growing and you're turning, you're, you know, you're turning this business into something that can continue to go into scalable growth. Well, that's the life cycle of every great startup. And, and it's rare, really rare, in, in my experience, you know, as an investor and, you know, and as a venture capitalist, to find one individual who can actually navigate the transitions between each of those stages. Usually, usually the, the, peop- the inventors are not the people who can, re- can build the business or grow the business. And conversely, the, the business people or even the people developing the market the go-to-market strategy for the product aren't the inventors who can actually come up with the great ideas. That's, to me, that's fairly extraordinary that you've made it through all of those transitions and you're still standing and, and have, your, have your sanity. How, well, how, how, do, how do you explain that? So. Well, I feel like that I'm really lucky and fortunate because I'm a people that really, I'm, I kind of, I love people. I always enjoy talking to people and learn from people and communicate with people. I think that, you know, I found my strength is communicate with people, but how do we transfer that to be a business, real business, like what you said, a transaction. Each mm-hmm. transaction is really hard, very hard, because when you got a bunch of ideas, very excited, the very beginning, all the ideas are the ideas of spending money, not making money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But later on, you're kind of running out of money. You almost close the door. You mm-hmm. realize, you know, it's, it's really difficult because I am like an artist. I like art. I, I sing and I play mm-hmm. music and, you know, I'm, I, I was on stage. Mm-hmm. So when really we're facing the business world, it's really tough. Um, so I kind of, you know, I, I always kind of, you know, learn from people and try to change my ideas, even though I cannot change who I am and my value system, you know, which never, never changed. But, you know, one day my mentor, Mr. Sandy Chow, asked me one question. I think that question really changed me. You know, I kind of talking to him and telling him all my good ideas and he stopped me and he asked me, he said, well, stop. Well, those people are working with you who followed you for so many years. Mm 
-hmm. How do you make their life better? Even mm -hmm. though you are, you can survive by not making money, but how do you help them to increase their salary, mm -hmm. their income? How do you do that? Uh, okay. So that's really the question that woke me up, and I seriously, seriously thinking about the people who's working with me, and I said, well, it's not fair for them. It's really not fair for them. They, they've been working with me day and night, and you know they never complain. And we work so hard. And if you know every every year their salary is the same, then that's a shame on me. Yeah, it's an eye-opening view because a lot of, you know, actually I would argue nearly all mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and you are unquestionably an entrepreneur, having mm -hmm. built this. But now you're a successful entrepreneur, and you don't get to put those two words together. All that easily, right? <laughs> Not yet, but we're we're, but, we're, uh, we're going on. We are on the right no, track. No, you're yeah. already there. Believe me. I, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I see too many companies, too many entrepreneurs who will, who I know, wish they could get to that where you, where they can say they're successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's interesting though because what you're doing mm -hmm. is both providing a service mm -hmm. and a capability mm -hmm. that's valuable to your customers. But the, but the irony, and in fact, really the reason why, why I thought, hey, it, this would be a really interesting idea mm -hmm. to interview you, is that one of the most valuable things you have to offer to your customers mm -hmm. on you know, both sides of the pond, so mm -hmm. to speak, is that, that this is a living, breathing example mm -hmm. of how to make it in this community, how to make a splash in to the global community. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's like a master class in entrepreneuring. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, you know, I, I don't want to you know, understate that or overstate it, but it, it seems like you've more than anything else learned from your environment, but now you're also a lesson to others about how to do it right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, I, 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 there must be some great stories along the way, or some, you know, some great personalities, or great people that 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 you've encountered mm -hmm. who have influenced you. Obviously, your mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've been connected to some very well-known entrepreneurs, some very well-known personalities along the way. Uh, anyone in particular stand out that we can that we can call out without getting uh, getting a lawsuit for? <laughs> oh well, uh, well, I'm open and I can share with you a, a story. You know. Uh, what you mentioned is right, you know, it's always very difficult because we are doing something, it's not a traditional business and we are doing something, nobody ever done that before. So there is no rules or no road to follow. So we're abs absolutely, we're creating our new model. Mm -hmm. Everything is like, you know, really, we create our new things. Um, about seven years ago, you know, I was were taught, sitting with a uh, uh, president of Heister, Mm -hmm. a, a very respectable Chinese American high tech group. The mm -hmm. president, um, he was there sitting to me, Mr. Wei Zhou. He asked me, he said, oh, Do you watch the singing competition, which called the, the Great Voice from China? Mm -hmm. I said, Yeah, I watched it. He said, Well, I really enjoy the show, but you see, those singers, they came out as a great star, but many of our startup companies, our entrepreneurs, they are the star, but there's never a show for them. Mm. to bring them mm. out as a star on stage. Will you be able to do that? So I, I'm thinking that, well, that's right. So, you know, we started a show called Battle Silicon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Battle Silicon in Chinese, actually, is the name of a Monkey King story. It's like, you know, four people travel along all the journey to the West. Yeah. And uh, there are four people, different characteristics, and Monkey King and, you know, the, the, you know, all those mm. people together. Yeah. So it's like a very good startup team. So people with different talent can back up each other. And also they go to West. Now what is West? It's all Silicon Valley is the West. Mm -hmm. So what is the, the, they are actually seeking the wisdom. And what is wisdom? The innovation is the, the wisdom. So uh. <laughs> we give a name of that, Battle Silicon. And so for Battle Silicon is we have all the startup companies coming to here at our studio and we have all the mentors and our investors sitting there mm -hmm. and we give them a, a stage, let the startups show the talent and 
also not only the demo uh, or the uh, presentation of their the company, business idea, also show as who they are as a human, an interesting human being. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. So that show has, you know, actually the first one we started in Silicon Valley. Mm. And we act got nearly uh, over 100 uh, startups joined our show. Mm. And even we brought that to Hong Kong. And some of startups get their investment mm -hmm. from, uh, from the show. And also, their story inspired many people. Yeah. The, yeah. So when you, mm. when you did that, so you drew in people who, who had their story to tell. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that helped catalyze their, their journey to raising funds, to getting to the next level, to making the right connections. Now, you've done this, you know, part of the 10 year journey is that experience, you know, eventually leads to mastery, right? At some point over time. So do you have a set of criteria that you use now to identify and select the companies that, that you work with that would, that would most benefit? And, and maybe turning that around, is there something that early stage startups, early stage companies that, mm -hmm. that want to bring something innovative to market mm -hmm. need to have before, mm -hmm. you know, before you can really help them mm -hmm. at the highest level. Mm -hmm. I mean, exposure never hurts, mm -hmm. but you know, as they say, there's no such thing as bad PR, right? Mm -hmm. but, but on the other hand, do you see companies that, that kind of want to just throw something out to market and aren't really ready? Mm -hmm. and, do you, and, and how do you advise them? I mean, where, where do you get the most, <laughs> where do you get the opportunity to provide the most help to the right kinds okay. of entrepreneurs? Thank you for, thank you for asking, asking this question. I feel that, you know, almost all the companies, they need their story to be told in mm -hmm. the right message. That is yeah. so important because we are not investors and we are not industry leaders. We don't really know about their technology. But, you know, it's really good for us because we, we are communicating with startup companies and VCs and, you know, industry leaders all, every day, all the time. So we know how to tell the story, mm -hmm. especially for the consumers. Uh, you know, normally the story, good story, maybe just one sentence. But mm -hmm. this message is so strong and so compelling. Yeah. Like yeah. we see Nike, they say, just do it. Mm -hmm. But just do it, you know, need, need, this story needs to be told. Otherwise, people will say, oh, what does that mean? What does that mm -hmm. stick, tick mean? Right. For mm -hmm. Dining TV, our slogan is connecting dreams. But behind the connecting dreams, there are so many stories. We're connecting dreams from entrepreneurs and startups from mm -hmm. East and West. Yeah from community for the industry, industry leaders. Mm -hmm. There are so many stories behind that. So when you, when you have a sl slogan or one sentence to describe who you are, and there are so many stories need to be told constantly, and every company need that. That's how we found that you know, this is a need, and this is how we can help them. Great. You know, as we were preparing for this conversation, mm -hmm. we, we talked a little bit about the challenges of helping to bring East and West cultures awareness of one another and, mm -hmm. and, and understanding of one another because you know, there are so many differences, not just language differences. I mean, in some sense of the word, language is the easy part, right? That's just translation. But there are these great cultural differences. And yet it seems to me that both cultures have very different strengths that have brought them to the fore and have gotten them to a point where, you know, at this point, there are opportunities that you can help catalyze to bring, to, you know, to bring the best of both cultures together in sort of a hybrid that creates something greater than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, is that what's what's your biggest <laughs> challenge at this point? Well, this is a big challenge. It's also the great opportunity. You so, you see what you know in China. The culture, we have our culture strengths. And we see our Chin Chinese people are not very direct. They are modest. And the Western people are more direct. Uh, they are not really very modest. But we actually, you mm -hmm. know, on some circumstances, it's just opposite. It's oh. just opposite, really, you know. How so? Sometimes, you know, <laughs> how so is, I feel like in Western culture, people, you know, in a meeting or when they discuss things, they don't really critical. 
they always see, they, they agree with you at the first place. They, they give you a space and let you speak out. But in Chinese culture, you know, in on many of the circumstances, they are very critical. Then this critical, they think it's a direct, but it sounds like so critical. And make people kind of really, you know, build a wall between mm -hmm. people immediately. Yeah. Then, so this is really, you know, interesting. So I, you know, we've been working with many of the Chinese companies and trying to help them to land in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and to communicate with people, even, even though they have good intentions, they have great high, high technology, they have the best product, but it's really hard for them yeah. to launch their product to American market. We found it's very interesting, yeah. So you can help catalyze that mm -hmm. by, by identifying or helping them understand mm -hmm. the things that they need to adapt to culturally mm -hmm. and in terms of how they execute their business mm -hmm. in order to make a splash here. Mm -hmm. um, what about going in the other direction? What, what would you say, for example, to American, American company companies? going to China? Yeah, yeah because it, to me, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the 800 pound gorilla <laughs> as far as a market goes in the long run. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, we are also helping some of the American com companies go into China, help them to communicate, mm -hmm. and if, especially with the industries, uh, with mm -hmm. companies and with market and with industries. We feel like, you know, American co companies, they're being successful here mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley or in the United States. If they go to China, they have to work with local people. Otherwise, you know, they, they cannot move this business model and even move the, the management team to China. It's very, very challenging and very difficult. You have to work with local people, be able to yeah. really communicate and build up the trust. Because you know, it's hard to build up the trust. Even though you first met people, they're very friendly, but mm -hmm. you're not yet build up the trust. So it's always build up the trust first. Then you can, you can do business, yes. So, so in a way, there, there's a parallelism. Both cultures mm -hmm. seem to have, you know, certain barriers you have to get over. Mm -hmm. And trust is related to both of them, but it does mm -hmm. seem like trust is essential to even starting mm -hmm. the relationship, you know, it, it, starting sort of a relationship in the East versus, you know, in our Western culture, we're so susceptible to marketing. If you, if you get enough buzz, people just assume you know what you're doing, which isn't always true. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting concept. Well, you know, as we draw this interview to a close and knowing that you're celebrating 10 years of Ding Ding TV, mm -hmm. what's next? And where would you like to see this go next now that you're kind of off the launching pad and <laughs> headed, for, headed for the moon? I have so many dreams, you know. I cannot imagine, even though this is a small place at Ding Ding TV, but I can imagine that in the future, so many people are connected through us, through this platform. And through this connection, Great ideas mm -hmm. will come out, and many people can work, t work together. Because I feel like it's success is really not, you know, you're smart, you work hard, or you have the great technology, or you have a great company. I think that success is how you get people to work together. Mm -hmm. So I can see, I can imagine that in the future, many people will work together through this platform and persuade our dream together. That's a tremendous mission. Yes. Well, Diana, thank you so much for uh, indulging this crazy idea. I'm glad you finally got a chance to be the interviewee <laughs> instead of the other way around. And, uh, and thank you for all that you're doing for both the, the East and West communities. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you so much. You, you just mentioned the crazy, you know, my husband.